Although he's very fond of the Dutch language, his ambitions are way bigger than just the Netherlands. He's on a mission to give the entire planet access to fresh water. He holds a master's degree of the University of Technology in Delft, and he has, he has been listed on the Duurzame Jonge 100, good luck with translating that, in the past years, and he has a passion for innovative in international developments in the field of water and renewable energy. Please welcome to the stage from Elemental Watermakers, Sid Vollebrecht. <laughs> hey, Sid. When you open your water tap here in the Netherlands, there's always a flow of fresh, potable water coming out. Being surrounded by water, it's difficult to imagine for us that water scarcity is actually one of the biggest challenges for humanity. Unfortunately, it is. My name is Sid Vollebrecht, and I'm the co-founder and managing director of Elemental Watermakers. We ensure fresh water today without limiting tomorrow. Allow me to explain. Already two-thirds of the world's population are facing water shortages within 10 years from now. Many of the water systems that keep our ecosystems thriving and feed our population have become stressed, as you can see on this picture. As a result of growing population and changes in lifestyle, our rivers, lakes and aquifers are drying up quickly. Already over half of the world's wetlands have disappeared. Through irrigation, energy production, industries and by domestic uses, the water that we have is used much faster than it is naturally renewed. And then there's climate change, which is altering weather patterns and also causing more severe droughts. Water is becoming a reason for conflict. So what can we do? Well, at the same time, water is covered, covering 70% of our planet. Most of it is salt, and only 3% is, is fresh water. Less than 1% of, of this fresh water is accessible by us. The rest is stored in glaciers or underground. So the obvious solution to get more water is desalination. And when we talk about desalination, we're talking about reverse osmosis, which is the most energy efficient and preferred desalination technology. Although it's energy efficient, it's still energy intensive, resulting in high costs and impact on this fossil driven industry. So the next logical step would be to couple desalination driven by renewable energy. Because desalination currently is already contributing for 1% to all the electricity we use with the world, while it doesn't even create 1% of our water. So desalination by, driven by renewable energy, why are we not doing this yet? Well, there's one main barrier. Reverse osmosis is designed for constant and continuous operation, while renewables, the sun, the wind, and the waves, oh, they fluctuate over time. Existing solutions are therefore expensive, as they either use batteries or operate discontinuously. And we came up with a solution for this. Allow me to explain. Reverse osmosis works much like a sieve. If you have a membrane with really small holes, and if you put seawater under high pressure on these membranes, only the fresh water molecules will be able, able to travel through these holes. The salts, the bacteria, and the viruses will stay behind and will leave the reverse osmosis process in a separate stream. So all we need for reverse osmosis is pressurized seawater. For seawater, we need 50 bars of pressure, which is 500 meters of head. So if we were to build a tank at 500 meters and fill it with seawater, we can do reverse osmosis. With this tank, we can overcome the fluctuations of the renewable energy. For example, if we use the sun and directly power a pump during the day to displace the seawater to the tank, then we can operate the reverse osmosis unit 24 hours. The last step is to overcome this elevation requirement. We introduce an energy recovery device which reuses the waste pressure from the brine to reduce the elevation requirement with 80%. This means we can provide 24 hours of water production with 90 meters. But what does it really mean? Well, as we avoid the use of electricity, this can lead to savings up to 70% of the cost of water. At the same time, we use unlimited resources, the sea, gravity, sun, the wind. There's no fossil fuels involved. Last but not least, it's scalable for a few cubic meters per day, up to 100 millions of liters production. And how do we know this? Well, a couple of years ago, we built our first pilot in Indonesia. 
And last year, we commissioned a commercial installation on the British Virgin Islands, which has produced over five million of liter of drinking water from seawater. Here you see the solar panels, and on the right you see the desalination unit. This unit creates more than 12,500 liters of water per day, using only 75 square meters of solar surface. This has resulted in 63% savings for the end user, uh, in comparison with this conventional electricity-driven reverse osmosis unit. At the same time, he's enjoying guilt-free water and avoids 25 tons of carbon dioxide emissions each year. The payback of this system is between four and seven years, but we notice that for end users such as resorts, municipalities, governments and communities, this is still a big barrier. This investment is higher because of the renewable energy aspect. And to cope with this, we're now working on water purchase agreements. This is a village in Cape Verde where they still have to truck water each day to the village. In this village, we will create a desalination system by solar energy, which will produce 50,000 liters of potable water on a day. This water will be the single source of water for the village, and the government will pay back the investment through a water purchase agreement where we lock in the water production and the price for 20 years. This means direct savings for the village and the municipality, higher water quality and availability, and at the same time, generating jobs. We believe that desalination driven by renewable energy will hold an essential role for the future water supply. It's a huge opportunity for resorts, governments, municipalities, and industries. Our biggest challenge currently is to connect with these decision makers, these end users, which are located far away from here. And we hope that you can join us in solving freshwater scarcity using only the sea, sun, earth, and wind. Thank you.